Joining us now, retired Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. General, thank you for your service to America. Why isn't the Biden White House freezing the $6 billion in funds for Iran now? 20 Republican senators demand that. What do you think? Yeah, Liz, thanks for having me. Look, it's because they want to normalize relations with Iran and the region. You know, when we, back in the Trump administration, we were pretty clear what we did with, we came out of Jigpawa, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the Iran nuclear deal. We cut off funds to the Palestinian authorities. They've now put $250 million back into the Palestinian authorities. They're not talking at all about taking back the $6 billion. That's because they've wanted to normalize. And they're starting to get religion. They're not there, but they're starting to see what that's caused. So what, what happens is when you don't be hard on on people like the Palestinians in Hamas, you get what happened this last weekend. And now they see what's happened. And the result of, of their kind of dithering of not taking a hard stand with Iran and, and all the proxies, and their proxies are there. Hamas is a proxy of Iran. Hezbollah is a proxy of Iran. And they've just kind of walked away from it. You know, this is one of those, I've got a dog for a pet. They've kept an alligator for a pet. And the alligator is Iran. And they should back away from it as quick as they can. You're starting to see it. It's slow, but you're, they're sure not there yet. And, and my concern is when you see these dead Americans and these Americans that are now been, been captured by Hamas, it's going to keep putting more and more pressure on them. Sooner or later, they're going to have to make a hard decision you know, and do the break. It's General, what we do. General, you were with former President Trump. He had a muscular yeah. response to Iran. Where are the sanctions on Iranian oil, its banks? Where are the yeah. Russians, you know, they swiftly sanctioned Russia over Ukraine, but not Iran. Isn't Iran the biggest state sponsor of terror in the Middle East? I mean, political reporting, yeah. West Wing aides and Democrats close to the President Biden say this will fundamentally redefine Biden's legacy and shift the trajectory of his 2024 bid. So where are the Russian, you know, the sanctions yeah. that they had on Russia, on uh, oil, on banks, where are they for Iran? Well, it's a great question, Liz, but here's where you need clarity, clarity of thought and clarity of speech and clarity of action. And that's what President Trump had, which you don't see here. It's really, it's a binary d discussion. They're bad, yes or no. Not you'd go through a long answer. We're not going to give them money, yes or no. We're not going to give them funds, yes or no. We're going to take away this $6 billion, yes or no. You get in the gray area when you start explaining too much, and that's what they're doing. They need to make a very hard call and realize what you're looking at right now is a moral issue. And I thought we determined this at the end of 1945 when we said never again. Well, what you saw this weekend was never again coming back. What you saw was the brutalization of the children, of the men and the women and even the soldiers. Look, yeah. they decapitated Israeli soldiers and they shot people in their beds. I mean, these people are worse than criminals. It's, it's heinous. We should treat it like that and understand that part of that is being driven by the money that we're supporting them with, giving it to them, yeah. especially the $250 you know, million dollars that we gave the Palestinians. Hamas is a terror movement, period. It does what terrorists do, murder, maim, kidnap innocent victims. It doesn't play by normal moral rules. It's slaughtering entire families, women, children. You just mm -hmm. talked about that. Talk is that the Biden White House, they left behind a lot of uh, munitions and, and armament in Afghanistan now being used by Hamas. Listen to former, uh, let's listen to Mike Pompeo. You're going to hear Fox News' Mark Levin and State Department spokesman Matthew Miller here. Watch this. This is at its core about historic efforts by Iran to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. When the United States pays a billion dollars per hostage, there'll be more hostage taking. Look what happened yesterday. More hostages taken by the Iranian regime's proxy, Hamas, in Gaza. This is bad set of policies. We didn't create World War III, as they said we might, when we state, got out of the JCPOA, when we moved the embassy. They said we'd create World War III. No, what has created war here is American appeasement. American weakness. Would Franklin Roosevelt have given an enemy of this country that threatened to blow us off the face of the earth six billion dollars for any reason? How about Harry Truman? How about Dwight Eisenhower? How about John Kennedy? How about Richard Nixon? How about Ronald Reagan? How about the Bushes? Donald Trump didn't give them $6 billion, and he never would have given them $6 billion. So let's stop playing games with the propaganda from the Biden administration. I will also say that Iran has funded terrorism for years and years and years, decades, in fact, and we expect that they will continue to do so, which is why, even as we allowed them to have access to this humanitarian uh, funding, we have made clear that we will continue to hold them accountable. <laughs> General, your reaction to that, how are they holding them accountable? 
They're not. I mean, they're tone deaf. This administration is. And they're, they're letting them get, they're hoping against hope that they're going to be able to normalize relations with Iran and the region. They're not. We said that all along. That's the reason when we did the Abraham Accords, we cut the Palestinians out. We said, if you want to come, come along. But we're not going to count out to you. Remember, the previous Obama and Biden administration under Secretary Kerry made the comment, there'd be no peace in the Middle East unless you have the Palestinians with you. We changed that whole dynamic, and we were wrong. Look, I said it when we signed the Abrahams Accords, I went to a lunch in, in, in the uh, residence, and I sat next to Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of Great Britain. He looked at me and he said, you guys got this right, we had it wrong. And they should go back to what we did, it'll pay great dividends for them, but they won't. Wow, Tony Blair said it. Okay, Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg, again, thanks for your service to this nation. We appreciate you, and we appreciate you coming on. It's good to see you, my friend. Thanks, now, 